I was waiting at a bus stop a couple nights ago here in DC. So underfoot, I'm crunching a mix of salt, black ice. I can see my breath. I've got on like four coats. Basically what I bring to DC for this march is a raincoat, a winter coat, a light jacket, and a toothbrush. That pretty much covers what you need for the time here. And I'm waiting at this bus stop, impatiently, wondering why couldn't Roe v. Wade happen in May? <laughs> All those cherry blossoms would be glowing. We could try to organize maybe a pro-life night at a baseball game here in town, get like student discount. You could show off your pro-life t-shirts instead of having it buried underneath like a parka and a hoodie and maybe a sleeping bag. <clears throat> but then maybe, maybe January is the perfect time to be here. The perfect time to be here. We're here for no other reason than to witness to life. No other reason. Why would you come to Washington, D.C. in January except for this event? Even you might think of the black ice, the parkas, as a a kind of merit badge, if you will. So we could have like a merit badge for like nine plus hours on a bus. Merit badge for sleeping on a gym floor for more than two nights. Also when the guy next to you is snoring and you don't get any sleep on that gym floor for those two nights. But not just a merit badge, even. You know, Boy Scout style with the sash, so I'm on there. More than that, we're sharing in the mission of Christ, brothers and sisters. We walk with Christ. We're called by Christ to be here through our Jesuit schools through the mission of the church we're called to be here with Christ with him to stand up for the unborn to speak out in the defense of pregnant women especially those who are young afraid poor who feel all alone We are with them in the cold, in like the freezing sleet that we might see today. This is the heart of our Jesuit mission, the mission of our schools. How can we serve the poor if we abort them before they're able to enter this world? How can we stand up for the rights of those on the margins of society, for immigrants? How can we serve them if they're not alive? If the weakest among them are aborted before they can breathe the fresh air of this free land? We're here with joy. I love, I love how the Jesuit school fight songs get kind of retrofitted for this event. Hey blue, hey white, hey team, pro-life. See the Franciscans with the shaggy beards bouncing around outside. 
the Jesuit schools singing their songs, Jesuits with a more kind of trimmed beard in the style of St. Ignatius, St. Francis Xavier. This is a matter of life and death. This is the premier human rights issue, social justice issue of our time. And we are right in the heart of it, brothers and sisters, right here today, now, thanks be to God. We are in the middle of things, and we are here with great joy. Christ's mission was one of life and death. The salvation of the human race, nothing less, nothing less. Christ did not live a sort of dreary life, dragging his feet, quaking under the burden of his labors. Yes, he suffered. Yes, he carried his cross. But Christ's mission is one of great joy. See him in the Gospels, drawing these children to himself. Five-year-olds, two-year-olds, six-months-olds, holding them in his arms, talking to his friends, talking to us about the beauty and goodness of human life. That's why he came. That's why we're here to walk with him, to stand up for those who don't have a voice, to show these young women they are not alone. We're here to support them and love them. We love these young women, we love their babies. There's, it's ridiculous to separate those two. If you love one, you love the other. That's why we're here. We're blessed today to have with us some of the Sisters of Life. They are in the middle of things in a way I can only marvel at. They resurrect the dead. That's what they do. Women considering abortion, see a sister, perhaps call one through their hotline. Find a word of warmth, a word of hope and encouragement. Women who have been through an abortion can find the sisters of life, can come back to life. Women who feel like they have destroyed everything that's important that there is no hope for them anymore. They find that's not true. Our God is one who saves, one who forgives, one who raises the dead. One who brings these women back to life. Turns them into apostles of life. So that other women don't make the same choice that they did. Brothers and sisters, we are in the heart of things today. Yes, it's cold, but we are warm with Christ. As we pack together, marching together, singing our fight songs for life, we stay warm together because we are with the Lord today. We are here with joy, yes, a time of sorrow, yes, a time of injustice, but we're here in hope, brothers and sisters. We are here because we love the Lord, he loves us, and we want to share that love with others. Drawing them into his hope and his justice. I am honored and grateful to be a Jesuit on this day in particular. I'm proud to be with you. I'm proud to be with many of my brothers who are able to come here today. 
We're blessed by the Sisters of Life, by some Dominican sisters able to join us today. Their mission of teaching, spreading the faith. We're here for life, however long it takes. This is my eighth march. How many more is it going to take? Eight more? Twenty more? Whatever it takes, we're here with the Lord. You might bring your children to this march a few years from now. Young man there in the back, you might be sitting up here a few years from now. Young woman from Boston College, you might be with the sisters, keeping your ears warm with that veil a few years from now. We are here for life. However long it takes, we are with the Lord. We are here in hope and joy. And we come to this table to be fed by the Lord's own body and blood, keeping us warm, that we may spread his warmth to those we meet. Thanks be to God, brothers and sisters. Ad maiorium, Dei Gloriam.